This is the Tiger Cats pregame presented by Journey Rewards. Bubba O'Neill joined by Andy Fantuz. On the line right now, former Tiger Cats assistant coach and color analyst John Salavanis with his pregame salutations. Coach Sal, thanks for joining us. The setup for this week's game is interesting to me. You know, uh, last week we talked about Winnipeg uh, with the uh, the bye coming after the Ticat game, the travel by Winnipeg, the emotional win on Labor Day, uh, and uh, Hamilton just coming off the bye. Now the shoe's on the other foot. Montreal's coming off the bye. Hamilton goes on a bye after this game, and Hamilton's traveling. Winnipeg, or excuse me, Montreal, will be at home for the fourth straight game. Now, Hamilton's coming off that big emotional high off of the Winnipeg win and has not won a game yet on the road. So the setup is all different than it was last week. Can you put that into uh, terms that uh, maybe some of our listeners might understand? Uh, what, what does that mean, all those, all, those, uh, all those setups that you just talked about? Well, when we talk about uh, a team that's getting ready to go into a bye week, they generally uh, are not as uh, efficient on the field as normal. And when you're coming off a big emotional win, you sometimes have a letdown the next time around. And so what we're saying is here's uh, a, a huge game for both Montreal and Hamilton, and Montreal has the edge because they're coming off a bye. They're at home. Hamilton has to travel to Montreal. Montreal's played four straight games at home. Uh, you know, all of these things uh, weigh on the uh, players and the coaches uh, as the game uh, begins. Thanks, Coach. I appreciate that. Um, the one, one issue that Hamilton has had against Montreal this year is, is the fourth quarter scoring. They've been outscored 22 to three in their two games in the fourth quarter. Now, we go back to last week and a little different setup, and even though Hamilton was outscored 14 to seven in the fourth quarter, to me, the most impressive part about last week's win was that long eight minute, almost eight minute drive to seal the win in the fourth. How, how do you approach this game thinking of the fourth quarter when you haven't even started the game? Well, you know, we talked all season long about not being able to finish a ball game and playing well in the fourth quarter. Now maybe we got that monkey off the back of the Hamilton players and they can, you know, can be a little freer in that fourth quarter. It's still going to come down to a very close ball game as it was the last time they were in uh, Montreal. You know, uh, it, to me, this game uh, will be one of those in which Hamilton needs to start real quick. They need to have a fast start in this ball game. get those uh, Montreal fans with their horns uh, to be a little uh, silent going into uh, that fourth quarter. So a quick start and, and play all 60 minutes. You could see a difference in Dane's posture, his poise in the pocket, uh, his confidence last game. How do you cultivate that? What kind of play calling uh, or, or uh, motivation do you give to Dane uh, early in this game? Well, it goes back to the idea that, you know, remember all the good things that you did, Dane, and continue to do those things. The, the difference I thought last week was he got protection. He looked more comfortable in the pocket. He was able to step into his throws. He was not bouncing up and down and going sideways uh, in the pocket. He slipped when he had to out of the pocket, but most times he was comfortable in there and he was getting his reads downfield. So I would just say, uh, Dane, you finally uh, got things going. Let's not go backwards. Let's continue to go forward. Hey, Tiger Town, you could win a trip to the Thai Cats October 29th, away game in the nation's capital. That's Ottawa, of course. We're Journey Rewards. Now simply hit TieCats.ca slash journey dash rewards to enter to win two tickets on Via Rail, hotel, and game tickets, plus a chance at other prizes, including an autographed Thai Cats jersey or $250. That's a gift card, folks. To the Thai Cats shop and get all kinds of goodies. Go on the road with the Thai Cats to Ottawa, where Journey 
rewards. Hey, Coach, you know, lots of praise certainly has gone to Dane Evans, uh, CFL uh, top performer of the week. But you know what? A lot of praise certainly has to go to the Ticats offensive line play. And with respect to the whole unit, left tackle Tyrone Riley just cost Travis Vorknoll his job with the team. <laughs> well, that, that may be the case, uh, Bubba, but uh, the fact is that uh, they brought in an American uh, offensive lineman, so it, it was obvious they were going to have an off, uh, you know one of the offensive linemen go out. But, uh, you know, when I look at the lineup that they have, the only thing that worries me on the offensive line is we're, we're dressing two backups where I think you only need one uh, to be in, the, in this ballgame. And the reason is special teams. And I think special teams will be very, very important in this ballgame. You know, Montreal leads the CFL in, in big plays on special teams. Uh, they have 10 of them, and they've only allowed one. So specials are going to be very important. And that's one of the positions uh, that you could gain a special teams player if you didn't dress that seventh offensive lineman. Both teams, probably their most consistent as, uh, aspect of the game has been special teams uh, all season long. And, you know, I don't know if our listeners realize, it's always a difficult time after the NFL finishes the preseason for a few unlucky individuals on each team because uh, there will be some new players brought in, which means, like you mentioned, uh, there will be some existing players getting released and, and losing their jobs. So, um just a little tidbit there, but going back to the game here, um, you're going against Trevor Harris, okay, and he's he's got 147 career touchdowns. Uh, he, he, he's, a, he's the kind of guy who pre loves doing pre-snap reads and knows where he's going with the football most of the time before the snap. How do you scheme against him? Well, Trevor Harris, this will be his 92nd start, uh, and he leans real heavily uh, on uh, the number four receiver in the CFL, that's Eugene Lewis. Now, Lewis, in two games versus Hamilton, has got 15 catches for 253 yards. So, Harris is a rhythm passer. You mentioned the fact that he has the ability to read defenses. I think he's very accurate passer in the 15 to 18 yard area, but he's ranked last in the CFL in the deep ball. He's only got 14 completions in that 30-plus range. And Lewis has six of those. And the other, uh, Julian Grant, the wide receiver on the other side, has four. So, you know, overall, Harris is a good quarterback, but he's a pocket quarterback. So what you've got to do is you've got to get pressure on him. And when you look at uh, the way Hamilton's been playing, one of the guys that's been a, a standout to me is Mason Bennett. Coming off the edge, you know, he's got five uh, uh, tackles for loss and he's got five sacks already. And you get Hauser back on the other side. I look for Teddy Laurent to have a real big game against a newcomer at that left guard spot. So uh, overall, you've got to pressure uh, Harris and not give him time to find that second read and, and put him in second and long situations where he has to throw the ball deep down the field. You know, Coach, just kind of running short on time here, but let me throw you this here. Tiger Cats are 0-6 on the road. I mean, have you ever seen anything like this from this club? And, like, is, is it something that just gets to you when you're away from Tim Horton's field because they're, they are 500, they're above 500 team here at home? Well, they should be over 500 at home every year. But uh, the on-the-road business, that, you know, to me, that's just an anomaly. That, that doesn't happen that often. Uh, when it does happen, I don't think it weighs heavily on the players because, you know, you're doing the same routine uh, on the road uh, as you would at home. The difference is that you're not in your own bed at night and not in your own home. So I think they're, they're man enough to understand that, and I don't see that as an issue in tonight's game. Folks, his pregame salutations are legendary in these parts, and we certainly appreciate his participation. Coach Sal, enjoy the game. Do you got a pregame meal or a drink that you, you will enjoy this evening? Well, you know, uh, let's just put it this way. I'm on Hitchcock's bandwagon. <laughs> We'll find we'll find out what he's uh, what he's serving up in a, a little bit later in the show. Appreciate it, Coach. All right, good talking to you guys. 